coffee chat about about you guess it more mckinsey stuff because like we talked about last week it's we're mckinsey going, month we're January going to be talking mckinsey. a lot about mckinsey method because we do really think it's one of the best things we have going for us here in this clinic and for our patients too and that's not i mean that's that's all four of the docs in here mm -hmm. are going to use that as a primary tool in their assessment and on their home exercise program and then of course in therapy as well so right so the the goal of us doing the these um, continued chats on uh, McKinsey method is to shine more light on what it actually is and how it how it uh, is utilized in our clinic. So last week we kind of gave you guys the introduction to McKinsey method and what it is. There was a uh, little write up I did on our email uh, uh, blast that hopefully some of you guys were able to take a look at. But today we want to talk more about some of the specific characteristics of the McKinsey method. Which, if you want to get on the email list, um, I put out something that yeah, I did. Uh, yeah. yeah, I put out something that I did, uh, like a, a review of what I spoke on at a conference I spoke at last past weekend. And we had a lot of people that wanted to get on the email list. So we sent out one email a week, basically, where it's not trying to, like, kill your inbox here. But if you want to get on the email list, and even if you're not in the area, then then hop on there. It's all sort of informative stuff uh, for you guys. Mm -hmm. as so you and there'll be continued stuff on the McKinsey Method over this this month in the, in the email as well. But... What we're going to talk about today are a couple things that we uh, that we're looking for when we're utilizing the McKinsey method with our patients. The first one that we're going to talk about is something called the directional preference. So, so they're kind of like connected, right? You right. Can't find one without the other. Right. So directional preference is the first thing we're going to talk about, and then we're going to talk about something called centralization and peripheralization. So how so would you define directional? Preference? Yeah, directional preference is really a concept that Robin McKenzie, who's the, the founder of, of the McKenzie Method, he, he discovered this in sort of like tinkering with this technique. So remember, McKenzie is repetitive end range loading. Um, so that might mean like repetitively arching back or bending forward or side to side or whatever the case may be. But what he found through this repetitive end range loading is that you can have, well, if the, if the patient is going to respond to McKenzie, and they're what we call a derangement, which we'll talk about classification for sure later on. Derangement is one of their major three classifications, and one of the hallmark um, attributes of a patient that has a derangement, which is essentially just a syndrome, mm -hmm. is going to be having a direction of preference. And what that means is that you can find a direction that if you move the joints, be it a spine, an elbow, or a shoulder, whatever, in that direction, repetitively, you get improvement of symptoms. So that could be increased active range of motion, reduced intensity of the pain, maybe the character of their pain goes from sharp and shooting down to just sort of aching or just sort of tight. Um, and then there's also the phenomenon that Brad's gonna talk about here in a second called centralization and peripheralization. So we use the direction of preference as one of the main indicators on whether that patient fits into the classification of derangement and whether they're going to be a good fit for McKenzie. It also is what's going to help us decide the precise um, exercise that we're gonna send the patient home with that is tailored to them. So McKenzie for a lot of people is very um, frustratingly nonspecific. You know, as someone who's a huge anatomy and mechanics geek, I get it. But at the end of the day, if you look at an MRI or an X-ray or a CT or whatever the case may be, you're still guessing if whatever is on there, whatever abnormal anatomy is found on that image mm -hmm. is actually contributing to the pathology. With McKenzie, the, we're not quite as specific, but the correlation is definite. We know for a fact that, oh, if we move the patient you know, into repetitive side glides and standing, that we're able to abolish their symptoms, improve their range of motion. So we may not know exactly what's going on anatomically, but we know in terms of a movement, because we found a direction of preference, we know 100% that that exercise is right for that patient. Right, so as uh, Dr. All mentioned, some things we're looking for when we find a directional preference is do things like active range of motion change, do, does pain intensity change or location, which kind of, 
leads me into this discussion on something called centralization and peripheralization. So let's take the neck, for example. If we're treating someone for a neck derangement, which once again, we're going to talk about these different classifications maybe, maybe next week. week. Maybe next week. Uh, oh, yeah. well, there's our topic. So let's say I'm treating the neck and let's say I'm taking them through these retractions, which you've probably seen us do a good amount. Now, <laughs> if, if we're focused. doing this and they originally come in for neck pain, and they're like, well, my necks feel a little bit better, but now my hands numb. That would be peripheralization, which is not something that we see too often. Then to that extreme, this is just a, uh, an example. Just symptoms moving away from the moving spine down. towards the periphery. So peripheralization. Right. So we're moving in the wrong direction there. Not necessarily a horrible thing. It gives us information still, but we know that, that, that if that happens, we're like, well, that's not the direction we want to go. So that just tells us, let's try something else. Yeah. Now, centralization would be the opposite. Maybe somebody comes in with something like, quote unquote, carpal tunnel syndrome, and we're checking the neck. We take them through these exercises, and they begin to say, well, now the, the symptoms, I'm feeling a little bit in the elbow. We go a little bit more, and they begin to say, well, now it's kind of up in my shoulder, and we keep going. But the symptoms are abolishing from right. distal, like towards the right. periphery, and then... So like it's literally kind of sucking up towards the spine. That's what centralization would be. And now if we can centralize the complaint, that means prognosis is amazing. Yeah, and that right gives right. us a green light to say, keep going with the direction you're going. We've established our directional preference. And now the person's out, uh, patient's outcome is going to be pretty good. And so. there's, a, there, there's a lot of really good research that, that's showing a positive correlation between centralization and outcomes. Mm -hmm. And basically what an outcomes are is like, what, what are the results going to be? So if you have somebody come in there's a lot of research that's been done where you're trying to correlate, okay, we can centralize the symptoms. Let's say they had classic sciatica down the back of their leg with sitting or doing repetitive extensions, you know, on their belly. And now their pain isn't in their hamstring. It's, you know, it's not even in their glute. Now it's just right in the middle of their back. Even though they still have back pain, the fact that we were able to take it out of their leg, centralize it out of their leg, that tells us clinically that that is definitely the right exercise and we are moving in the right direction. So our confidence, when we look at the patient and say, look, you need to do X, Y, and Z, is really, really high because we know there's a strong correlation between centralization and good outcomes and inability to centralize, mm -hmm. whether it peripheralizes or just doesn't centralize, um, it's going to be a, a tougher case. We still get these people all the time. Maybe they're not a McKenzie case. That's something we can talk about way at the end of the month, like blending techniques together. Right. But if we have somebody that comes in and they can't, they can't centralize, they don't really peripheralize, and they're not getting good changes, that might tell us we need to use another tool mm -hmm. so that we can get them better faster. Right. And then this lends itself to the patient education piece, too. So obviously, we as clinicians are looking for this, wow, we're here in the office with you as a patient. But at the end of that first appointment, let's say, I may educate you on, okay, you're going to continue to do X exercise, whether, you know, oftentimes press ups, retractions. But what I want you to notice while you're at home, do you feel the symptoms coming up towards you? Do you feel them going back down the leg or arm? And that's going to guide us moving forward in the treatment because I need the assessment to basically continue with you going home with the exercise. So right. this becomes a very powerful piece of education for the patient to know if they're heading in the right direction or not. Because a lot of times they, um, well actually two things. One, this is the reason that we oftentimes have people come back in 24 or 48 hours after an initial assessment. Maybe we got the centralization or we think it's starting to centralize but we're not sure. And because we want to make sure that we're giving the patients, you know, the best, most helpful and safest exercises we can, we need to have them back in 24, 48 hours later to sort of confirm the, the findings that we had on the first visit. Okay. Uh, the second one is just as an example, a lot of times if somebody comes in with back pain and let's say they have a little bit of tightness down into the knee, well, then they do some exercises or they're doing something and they're like, oh man, my back feels great, but now my foot's numb. So even though they abolished their back pain, the fact that their symptoms peripheralized into their foot, that actually is an indication that they're doing worse. And the flip side can happen. They can have a lot of leg pain mm -hmm. with very little back pain. We do the exercises and they're like, oh, my back is killing me now, but they have no leg symptoms. Because, or despite the fact they have more back pain, because we were able to centralize it, we still know that that is the right exercise. Sorry, I left you with 20 seconds. No, absolutely. So 
Um, You're welcome. We're going to continue on this, this this trend of talking about the McKinsey method. We are always very happy to answer any questions you guys may have, so make sure you reach out with any of those. Um, next week, I think we'll talk about the classifications yep. to, to go down this road then, a little bit more. Yeah, we'll do classifications next week, and then maybe the week after we'll talk about integrating. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect. So three, two, one. Done. Have a good week. See you guys. Thank <laughs> you.